Good day, everybody. I hope I'm, uh, well, you can hear me. And if I uh, start mumbling a bit more, please remind me of it. Um, I'm Jos Weijers. I'm a member of Tool. Does that work? That works. I'm a member of Tool uh, Amsterdam. I'm the uh, current uh, two-time over impressioning champion of the Netherlands. I'm the German Meister current. And that's actually a big, big deal because um, I'm the second non-German I'm the second non-German <laughs> who ever won that, and uh, well, that's a big deal. And I'm the current world record holder, uh, current world record holder on impressioning. Thank you. Impressioning—that's what it's all about. Uh, we're going to impression keys, and what what is that actually? Impressioning, key impressioning is. Filing a blank uncut key to a working key without any prior knowledge of the binding of the, of the lock. That's basically it. That's what we're going to try. That's why I have this, this, this setup. Um, I'm, I will, it will include a demo and I tr try stuff with a microscope. I hope that works so you can actually see what I should be seeing. Okay. That's wrong. Okay. Um, is this a new thing? Well, actually, it's not. Because this guy, Edward Tickle, uh, used this technique in uh, the end 70s uh, for FBI black ops. Uh, well, for black ops. Uh, one of the stories is that uh, they had to go into a building, but they obviously did not have a key for, otherwise he would be done. And what the, the, the feds did, they put a big cardboard next to the door with a hole in it, and at in the cardboard. So he start impressioning through the, the hole and he end up with a working key. Uh, the fun part, of, well, the, the, the neat part of impressioning uh, opposed to uh, lock picking is that when you're done, you don't only have a open lock, but you have a key, which you can give to another operator who is probably not that efficient in lock picking or impressioning, but that doesn't matter because he knows how to operate a key. That was a bad be joke. <laughs> well, if anybody knows this guy, uh, I'd like to hook up with him because I'd really like to pick his brain. But uh, well, uh, up till now, uh, we didn't find anything about it uh, uh, besides a documentary, and that I really didn't want to show you guys because it's uh, it is in English, but it's dubbed over in German. So if I redub that to English, that's going to be crap. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, in the end 70s, it was used in the field, and the lockpick uh, community didn't really, well, I, I didn't even know if, 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 if there was an active community at that time, but uh, a couple of years ago, uh, a member of uh, SSDEF, which is a tool in German, basically, um, he spent quite a, a number of months investigating this technique, and he wrote a book on it. So he literally wrote the book on it. This is the German cover, there is an English version. And um, that was Oliver Dietrichsen. And he, he won the championships a couple of times. So yeah, he, he, yeah, he knows what he's talking about. Um, and that's the URL where you can order his book. He, he printed it. Uh, he, it's, a, it's a print on demand thing. So I don't think it can be ordered anywhere else than there. Uh, it has very, very explainer, uh, uh, very clear pictures of it. And if you go through that, then you'll, you'll know what, what uh, actually impressioning is. Because initially, when I, I, I've seen people do it, and I was like, I don't know what they're doing, but well, in the end, they have a working key. Uh, just after, but after I read this book, and well, mainly looked at the pictures, because that's, that's where the most info is, then, uh, then you do know, for, oh, that's what I'm looking for. And I hope to, to get a, a tiny bit of this, this body of knowledge over to you guys today. And uh, the book has uh, e even uh, uh, pictures from the Criminal Technische Prooflabor. That's German for CSI. So th they actually gave pictures up uh, for, and you probably now haven't got a clue what, what you're looking at, but maybe afterwards that, that's going to be more explained. Okay. The question is, how long can I stand in front of your server room of, or the server room from your company or whatever 
without being questioned, stopped, or arrested, or whatever. That probably will not happen within two seconds. Will that happen within one minute? Depends where you work. Well, 10 minutes? I think if I can spend 10 minutes at your server room door, then you have other problems. <laughs> um, but the neat thing about, uh, about impressioning is that if the answer to this question is either A or B, you're fucked. Because <laughs> I can't, well, I'm not saying that I can impression any key in a minute. I mean, I've done it before, but that does not mean I can do it on a, on a, on a, on a drop of a hat. But if I, but two seconds is enough for one little step in impressioning. And in contrary to lock picking, where you can open your lock and be done with it, if you, you can't half open a lock, but you can half impression a lock. You can stop and return later. Um, I'm sorry. I'm a friend of mine, he's a pen tester, and he worked at a, uh, uh, at a building with several levels, and he worked at five, so he was allowed in five. He was not allowed in six. Um, <clears throat> if you wanted to go to six, you needed a key to uh, override the elevator. So he took a blank key into his office, and every time he wrote, he happened to be alone in the elevator, so that's in the morning or not, um, he, he did his tiny little impression thing and worked on that key, and in less than two weeks' time, he had a working key and could go to six level. That's kind of neat. So how does that actually happen? Well, first, if you want to know how to impression, you have to know how a lock works. Well, uh, there have been a number of uh, security conferences and hacker conferences where uh, lock picking is explained, and probably a lot of you even tried it. Um, so I'm going to go over it very quick, because we need that uh, basic info uh, in order to understand depressioning. Well, this is a Euro cylinder lock, and me being from Europe and this being a European lock, it's configured the European way. For the bulk of this crowd, that would be upside down. Whoa. <laughs> That's correct. We're all aware of that fact. <laughs> but thanks, Roy. <laughs> You're late. <laughs> he's actually the first guy, the, the first non-German who actually, well, he's the first non-German who ever won that, uh, uh, the, the German Meisterschaft. So he's the, he's the first one. <laughs> that one. And the lights go out. So, back again, Euro config, uh, Euro profile. So, uh, all these initial pictures are for the most of, the, of this crowd upside down. But, same, uh, well, it's the same. Um, <laughs> lost for words here, sorry. Um, if we take, come on. If we look at a schematic uh, view of a lock, you see a big round yellow thing that actually needs to turn, and if it turns, we call it open. But for some reason it doesn't, and you see a other uh, metal bit, which is colored red in this picture, that probably has something to do with it. But we can't really tell that much now, so we go one layer deeper. These schematics are actually uh, done by Deviant, and, uh, well, I, with permission, nicked them. And uh, I, I like to use them because they're, they're very clear, they're very informative, and I can't draw for shit. <coughs> So, this picture, you see uh, a bit more material uh, in the red, and there is a blue piece of metal uh, in play all of a sudden, and there's a spring underneath it. And we can now see why the yellow bit can't turn, because there's blue stuff in the way. If you, oh, wrong way. There you go. So, it's in the way. So, if we have a means of getting that out of the way, and I wouldn't mind if that happened now, then you can actually open the lock. No rocket science at this point. But normally a lock is, uh, has more than one uh, pin stack. Uh, five is a, is a very used number. Uh, six, seven, 15, everything's possible. It depends what you're willing to pay and, well, basically that. Um, to open this in a way that all five uh, pin stacks are at the correct height, you need a special customized tool that we call a key. And 
then it can turn because all the 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 well the blue where the blue stops and the red begins that's exactly on the shear line so the big yellow thing can turn if you put the wrong key in there wrong you see that uh, the fifth uh, uh, is now too deep and now it's too high and it won't turn in the perfect world um, if you put nothing in there and try to turn your cylinder then it won't open like we all know and that won't open because there's several black uh, blue bits of pieces preventing it um, but we're not in a perfect world we use stuff like this I mean cylinder gets drilled in a machine that's mass produced uh, drills they have wear and tear they're not aligned correctly um, pins, well these are actually from Korea and they're really crap, but I mean th that's just to get the idea, I mean th this is, um, there's, there, there's tolerances and they're, 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 they're never the same so why is that useful? because you, you can't really make a perfect lock and even if you could it would have been way too expensive and not that useful I mean for a normal lock to operate that's, that's enough for, for, most, uh, for, for most people so what we try to envision is, you see that the, the five uh, dots on the left side, that's actually up for you. So that, that, uh, th that if you turn it, that actually not five of these blue bits are uh, preventing it from turning, but one of the blue bits is the first to prevent it from turning. So if I would be able to, uh, to take the second uh, pin stack and put it down to the correct level, then another blue bit would be preventing it. So basically, uh, we try to look at a five-pin lock at, as five locks concerning, uh, just containing one pin stack. And that's basically, because uh, it's not turning because the blue bit is in the way, and if we do, yes, sorry, yeah. Because if we do put that uh, pin stack down, then uh, the cylinder will turn, just a very slight angle and, and until the next blue bit uh, starts preventing it from turning. But the neat part is that now this blue bit won't be, uh, won't be pushed back by the spring because there's bits of yellow in the way. So that's cool. So what we can do with that is picking a lock. After this is done with lock picking, we're going to impression. So you're going to feel and wiggle and to see which bits are, uh, have more, uh, uh, give less of a, sorry, sorry, have, have a different give than the other ones. So you can feel w which is stuck and which it isn't. And that's lock picking. You can use basic tools for that. You can get them with a lock pick village. And, well, cool stuff. So this is lock picking. And it also works on uh, different uh, keys because this is still pin stacks. It's, it's the same, just, just they're arranged in a different way. But now, uh, yeah, let's skip that. Does it want to skip that? That's not me, is it? <laughs> yeah, impressioning. There you go. Impressioning. Well, now you see that's in a uh, non-European config all of a sudden, because that's the way I like to impression. It's not that I was too lazy to flip the, 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 the picture. No, I'm not. Well, I am that lazy, but in this case, I, this is the way I like to impression. And because uh, this, if I mount the, 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 key like, the lock like that, that takes about four seconds off of my opening time. And during some competitions, four seconds is a lot. Um, yes, because what you do with impressioning is you start off with a non-cut blank, so the same blank that would be hang, that would hang at a locksmith uh, that you need several of. But uh, one thing is the key has to fit into the lock, not turn it because that would be a key. But you, you <laughs> yeah, then you're done. Not used to yelling. <clears throat> So what you do now is if you apply the same that we learned during the lock picking bit, if you turn this lock, it won't open because there's a bit in the way. Because we now have uh, filled up the whole uh, space where the key belongs 
is no longer the blue parts, but the, the red parts. But the idea is the same. Um, but now, because there's a big chunk of metal where your key is supposed to be, you can turn it left and right. So now it's one bit in the way, but if you turn the other way, hopefully it's another. So we have two places where uh, uh, pins are preventing the lock from turning. And that's good. Uh, yep. Because if we turn it ever so slightly and try to wiggle the key up or down, and you don't have that much uh, give, but I mean, you can move it a bit. Because if it would fit perfectly, there's no way you can get your key in. I mean, especially not after a few drinks. So there, 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 is, there is a give. Um, so if you look at this picture, and once in a while it, it moves, then you see that the pins that are not stuck, they just get moved up and down. Because the only thing that's holding them down is the springs and gravity. And the other two, so now it's the pin two and now it's the pin four, they get stuck. So if you put a, uh, a key under it and apply some force, you're pushing at a point. Now if you, afterwards, if you take it out and examine it very closely, I mean, with microscope or uh, magnifier, special lights or normal light, then you might, if you're lucky, see little scratches, dents, impressioning marks on that blank. I don't know if, uh, I'm not sure if you can all see it, but you see there that they, uh, it's two bits have been drawn. At, and is this any, is this viewable for anyone? Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So you, you're looking for very tiny marks, and uh, the first time you see them, it doesn't make sense, but you, in, eventually to get uh, used to, uh, well, to, to recognize them. So what we do then, at that spot where we see marks, we take away a bit of material. The key is a bit. And the key was not pun intended. Um, <laughs> it wasn't. Because <laughs> um, if you know your brand of lock, then you know what the, the, the normal uh, key depths, what the possible key depths are. And uh, you can start off with the, the highest in this config, the, the, highest, uh, uh, the highest possible biting. If you file your key off to that biting, then you know you have to go one step down. And that speeds up the process considerably. In, uh, in Europe, all the impressioning games are currently done on a particular Abus uh, cylinder. So we know that lock. We know what steps are. And we develop muscle memory for just that lock. So if I have to uh, impression an American lock that I haven't tried yet, um, I probably won't be that fast. But, well, I know the technique, so we'll see what happens. So that's not a working key at all. So it's rinse and repeat. So we do that again. So go left, go right. And there's a mark at the valleys we just created. So we're going to take even more off. Yes. There's probably something in the way somewhere, because it's silly. Yes. So we make it even deeper. Well, you guess what, what, what's going to happen now, we're going to do it again. But if you look at the fourth pin, and we start normally uh, counting from the shoulder uh, to, to the nose, that pin is on the correct height, which means that if we turn this lock and consider the lock as not one lock with five pins, but five locks with one pin, then lock number four is open already. That would turn. So. You probably can't feel it when you turn it, but it does turn a bit further, because that one was preventing it from locking, and now it's another one. That, that, that'll stay in place. So if you start wiggling now, uh, well, on pin number two, there still be a mark, because that was the first one uh, preventing it from turning. But at the number four is now out of play. So another position will start giving dents. Because that's the one that's correct. Uh, yep, so other places there we dance. And in the end, you will come up with a awful looking thing like this, but that's the working key. If you look at this one, the, uh, the lower one is impressioned. Uh, well, duh. Uh, it, it looks like a shark bite, uh, but if you look at the actual heights between the, 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 the top key and the bottom one, that one works. It might feel a bit funny, but it turns. So that's it. And if you're, well, if you're good at it, you win prizes. And 
Now it's time to go a demo, so I can shut up. Uh, throat is killing me. Okay, I'm actually going to do two demos. I hope, you, well, you guys are going to see my back the most of the time, but sorry about that, because I'm going to sit down for this. And then I'm going to do the same demo again, but step by step, and I'll explain what I'm doing. So this one is just, well, on speed, I hope. <coughs> Good to not talk for a second. Oh, different lights. What? That's correct. It's me demoing here. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to do it again. <laughs> What? <laughs> Whoa. Steady. That you could hear. Open. Yeah. <laughs> Working key. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same lock again. And at every step, I'm going to tell what I'm doing. I'm going to try to show what I'm looking at. And, well, if I hope that's clear then. So first, I need to put in a new blank. I'm going to switch this. That looks weird now, but it'll be better once I put a key under it. That's an abus. Normally, if you see me impressioning, it's an abus. Okay. I put a cheapo cheapo handle on your, uh, on your key so I can turn it a bit. Then, um, I'm going to use this special tool that, that will be uh, later in the slides also. That just makes uh, tiny scratches on it so I know where I start file, where I need to start filing. Um, well, a blank key looks like this. So it's not completely... Is that anything? Yep. Yep? Okay. So that's without the tool. And after I yank the tool over it, you look, look like this. You see a dot, there's one over there, and if you go a bit further, there's one, there's the next, All right, now it's even, worse, even better. See? So at that point, I haven't touched the lock yet, at that point I know where to start filing because I know this brand of lock, so I know what the highest possible cut is. Well, if I'm done with it, yes. If, if they're out of the box, they're not. They're a bit higher. Okay, so now it looks like this. You see that where I filed, it's less rough. It's way finer, which is actually good because it's easier to see marks on that smooth area. Let's see, let's try to make a good one. Yeah, I'm a bit off, but that's okay. I see on, whoops, where are we? There is a spot. There. I'll try to get it in focus, but it's where my cursor is now. Now you see it. You see? Okay, so at that point, I take off one depth. And I know how to take off one depth, but normally you can use uh, calipers to actually check how deep you are. 
So now, rinse and repeat. Do it again. Again on number two. Can you press that step right there? Okay. Okay, will do. You see, there's a spot. There, there. Now you see it. Yep, it's clear. So, put it in. Turn it left. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Turn it right. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. That's it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's training. No, no rocket size. That's your position number one. That's position number two, where again we see a dot. There it is. And I saw on the last position, I saw one that's not that clear. Well, actually more clear here than there. So I'm going to take off one step at number five and one step at number two. And we have an open lock. Well, you, you, this doesn't get amplified, but it doesn't want to. And if you look at it closely, you'll see that the pins are actually jammed. <laughs> so that one, that's a, we call that a crater mark for obvious reasons. So if I clean that up, to take it just a teeny weeny bit off, that's neat. Well, better. Working key. So now, if this would have been a black op, I'd just give... Whoa! I'm alive! <laughs> okay, um, uh, when I submitted this uh, slide deck to DEF CON for, uh, well, to put on a CD, I didn't have the... the well, I can lower my voice now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, we've passed that. That way. There you go. <clears throat> I, I didn't have this uh, slide deck ready, but there is a slide deck on there that's, that's quite, it looks like this, but it's not complete. Because um, last night uh, in my hotel room, I added quite a lot of slides. I, um, yeah, you get stupid sometimes. <laughs> And uh, what I did is to do that impressioning and to get some footage that you just saw, but took stills of it, and they're at the back of my presentation, so if you download it afterwards, then uh, that, that should be viewable. <clears throat> okay, over the years, because there has been, uh, uh, well, there, there has been competitions uh, longer than, well, there have been a couple of years of competitions in Germany and in the, uh, this is working. Yeah, <laughs> that's the reason. There, there have been competition in Germany and, uh, and in Holland. <clears throat> and if you look at the opening times, the best opening times during those competitions, you see a drop. So how is that possible? And that's not just because I started competing. Um, <laughs> we have better gear. And we learned and trained more. And what is the gear that you need, actually? It, it, it's, it's not that fancy. What you need is, as a training aid, a caliper. Uh, but for that to be useful, you need to know your possible levels. Can be found online, Oli's book has a, has a whole chart of it, and uh, well, mostly, uh, well, they should be like that, so it can be found online. Uh, I like the uh, Koplin on the right, because you can do it quite fast, and you can put marks on it that are not as uh, useful on a normal caliper. But you can go with a normal one, I mean, to, to, to keep the budget low, because that Koplin is quite expensive. Oops. Then you need a file. <clears throat> um, we used several files for this, and it's, uh, it, 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 I'm going to, I think this is less feedback. It's less cozy. But, um, we use, uh, well, the, the, the guys that I know that, that normally use it is a Koplin uh, cut number four Swiss file, and you can have several uh, sizes of it, because size does matter. Um, Yes, it does. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
that also is useful. I mean, tra tra training is uh, <coughs> training is key, but size also. So, um, uh, well, we use this. Well, I, I use this. Uh, I use a red tail, which means that it's shaped like that. Uh, you have also Pippin files, and if uh, they they are more drop shaped. I personally don't like them, but I know a, a lot of locksmiths who, who swear by them. I mean, they they really want that one. It, it's it's personal preferences. Uh, I mean, I, I go with with, with mine. Um, a good file is not cheap, uh, but if you treat it well, that'll get you uh, well years and years of fun. Because um, yeah, I, I had once that a a key broke off during a game, and that's weird. <laughs> you don't want to have that that. <laughs> Nope, still don't like it. You need a vice to hold your lock. Uh, probably a door will do also, but uh, <laughs> that's what it's there for. It, it, I didn't do nothing. Am I gone? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Aha. You can uh, use any other vice that you like, as long as it doesn't delay. Um, well, any vice will do, but I use Manfrotto super clamps. That, that's the one on the right. And, well, th they work for me perfect. They can swivel the way I want it. And, well, basically, they look the part. So that's why I have it. And they're light. So if you want to take the left one to a conference, you can't have any other luggage. <laughs> well, yeah. And you need a shitload of blanks. Because uh, the first time you're going to try this, you will break blanks. If you're not, you're not doing it correctly. Because training will cost you blanks, a ton of them. So get, get them somewhere cheap. Uh, I mean, your local locksmith will have, this weird, your local locksmith will have, uh, will have blanks, but they're probably gonna sell them to you for the normal rate that he sells uh, cut blanks. So if you need 200 of them, it's gonna be expensive. So make sure to get them somewhere else, or at least in bulk. Um, brass keys are, uh, seem to be the best because they make nice markings. On a steel key, so some, some are made of steel, um, you don't get markings. And if you switch to uh, aluminum or, or any other uh, uh, lighter materials, uh, they tend to break. So the, the, the middle of the road type uh, being brass uh, seems to work out the best. You need some form of magnification, the one I had here. This is a cheapo cheapo. Nothing fancy, normal light. Uh, you can have uh, the one on the left is quite fun for field work. Um, it's a add-on to a mag light that's normally, uh, initially that was used for uh, geologists to look at tiny rocks. But it, it works uh, with uh, impressioning also. And there is a light box available the, on the uh, bottom right. That one is actually crap, but I like the idea. Uh, it, it has a magnifier on top of it, and you can, there are several switches where you can alter the light. So it has UV, normal light, LEDs, whatever. And so it, it, it's neat, but well, this one isn't. And there's, uh, well, just yesterday I got uh, uh, pictures of the tool kit, the, the kit from Tool, um, that had even another light that uh, I, I never seen before. And this morning I had the first opportunity to play for it, and I like it. Uh, I'm, Probably not going to use it in competitions because this is fast, but it, for field work, yeah, I think it's, it's maybe even better than the one with the MacLeod attached to it. Um, you need some form of gripping device because the forces you're going to put on your key, you don't want to do that by hand. You can't. Um, there are several uh, commercial products to actually do that. The one on the left is quite popular. Um, I know a couple of guys who, who also use that. I like it also. It's light, and I like light. Um, you can use a normal grip, and I had just had a hunk of metal with a, a couple of holes drilled in it. There is a lot of snake oil sailed uh, for impressioning handles, because uh, once I got a handle that was, I don't know, 80 quid, something like that, uh, it, it failed the first time I used it. I mean, th there is some stuff. If it's over-engineered, at this point, you don't need it. I have a other tool that I didn't use now because it's, it, it's a visual aid that I, uh, especially when I started training, I used a lot. I used a uh, internal core, uh, a cylinder, and I filed it off. The fun part is if you stick a key in there, <coughs> uh, 
you can see where, your, uh, where the, the marks should appear, because they, they would be in the middle of my phalanx. So, because normally, if you foul and you see a mark, you get, is that a real mark? Did I do that? Is that sat? Is that a filing mistake? But if it's dead smack in the middle of where it's supposed to be, and this visual aid helps you by the, to determine if that's the right spot, then it's probably a mark and you can file. So that's also a cheapo cheapo solution. Uh, a, this is a tool that was custom made by uh, Jort Knapp. That's the tool I, I, I initially used to get the, the markings on the key so I know where I can start filing. Okay, now, if you try this, when you look at, uh, at, at the filed key that looked like if a, uh, if a shark took a bite of it, those edges are actually quite sharp. You will cut yourself. I mean, th th that's gonna happen, especially if you're in a competition and it has to open now. <laughs> that stuff goes wrong. I mean, one of the uh, first competitions I entered in Germany, <coughs> The first lock that I had to uh, give back to the judges, that was red. And it was not red when I, when I got it. <laughs> it wasn't. And the files are also quite pointy. So it, sometimes stuff will go wrong. And on the longer term, because um, you are making quite a weird movement. So carpal tunnel is, is definitely uh, on the horizon. That, that's uh, that's going to happen. And you guys all be in IT, and me also. Um, you don't really want that. Doing, that, doing this after a game of golf is also not funny, because you need to turn, wiggle, and, and grip. That gives a lot of stress in your muscles. So I spoke with an occupational therapist, who happens to be my girlfriend, and <coughs> I speak to her quite often, actually, and we figured out that if I take longer screws in my grip, because th these were, initially when I got this, it was nice and smooth. Because, yes, it's handmade, but not by me. Uh, I, I took the original screws out and put these long ones in. So now I can use them as a lever. So I take one hand for the turning action and the other hand for the up and down motion. And that's way easier. And, you don't, and in that way, you don't grip it also, which releases a lot of stress. That, so I think that's the best way. <coughs> Um, well, like I told you, uh, there is a tool set on the market. It's available uh, at the vendor area and in the uh, lockpick village. This consists uh, 70 of the, it is primarily uh, focused on the American uh, public, because this cons consists of 70 blanks that are the most uh, common in America. And the funny part is that in America, uh, we, you don't guys have that many keyways. In Europe, there's a bigger diversity. I mean, keyways goes like that. And in America, it tends to be straight down. So these probably will not fit, will not only fit the seven uh, most popular brands that are used, but it probably will fit way more. And there's a little light in there. The top one, it's a very tiny little uh, light source with a magnifier in it. And well, I laughed, but I never, well, used it in a competition or something like that. And it has a GoBad file, which is uh, the brand I prefer. So I'm uh, well, stoked about that one. And that's basically it. <laughs> For more info, uh, there's, uh, well, uh, you can re read that online also. The, these are the guys uh, that, that really helped me. And well, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.